What's going on everyone? This is Dr. Mephisto and welcome to the second season of The Ride. We're here in Toronto and uh, the guest I'm getting today is originally from Rwanda. Moved in Toronto about 13 years ago and is a sick um, singer that I met maybe like a, a couple of years ago and I can't wait for you to discover him. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like what you're seeing. Share it with your friends and family. Thank you for the support. Let's go. Hey, what's up? Okay, you need to adjust this. Yeah, man. This, How you doing? Chair. So it's on the side. Okay. You know how it works. Yeah. There you go. All right. Perfect. Let's do this. I have all these long legs. There you go. <laughs> tall guys in the building. Yeah, man. You taller. <laughs> so give me a quick introduction for people who don't know you. Ah, uh, my name is Casa. I am. Um, I am an uh, East African artist. I'm from Rwanda. And um, yeah, just a simple dude, really, that does music. Cool. Yes. So, give me a little background story, like how did you start uh, your career, you know, your artistic path, and that kind of stuff. Just you know, whatever you want to share about it. Yeah. Um, I, I started. It's it's really like the typical story. I started music when I was a kid, actually, uh, in in a choir. So I used to oh, I, nice. I used to be a choir singer, um, uh, and uh, from there. Um, I think I, I quit choir music when I was like maybe uh, like when, when I became kind of like a teenager. So I started choir music when I was like maybe eight years old. Oh. Um, so when I turned like old enough to like trying to be cool and hang out with other kids and do other things that are not just like choir related, mm -hmm. that's when I quit I quit music for a little while. Um, and I went back to music later on, probably like around when I was like 16, 17. Um, I joined a dance crew back home that was just like a legendary dance crew really like it, it, it was one of those dance crews that has been there for like many years mm -hmm. and like it kind of kind of get taken over by generations and generations so it just kept going um, so I was like maybe part of the fourth generation or the third or something like that mm -hmm. and uh, so that's how I kind of got re reintroduced into music and from there started because we used to do we used to like take like a popular song, let, let's say I, I don't know, like a uh, who was popular back then, like N Sync, for example. <laughs> we'll take like an N Sync song and kind of like learn the choreography and, and everything. But we used to do playback. Um, but some of us could sing. And it was just something that we didn't really care for. And one day we just decided like try to actually sing the songs while dancing them. Right. And that's how I really started singing again. And from there, um, kept going and did started actually taking it seriously. Um, but but yeah, it, it also took a little while before I can actually feel comfortable to get into music because um, coming from Rwanda mm -hmm. after the genocide, um, there was almost like no more music scene uh, um, alive anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, because you understand that musicians were who were like kind of like popular people like public people everybody knew where they lived and stuff mm -hmm. like that and those are the type of people that died first right you know like the people that people knew where you live mm -hmm. and people knew exactly what you are because you're that popular so there was no music scene um so after the genocide i actually worked in radio for a little while and my plot at working in radio is just because there was no local music on radio Mm -hmm. And there was no way for me to try to convince a radio presenter to to play more Rwandan content on radio. My only way to do, to make that happen is to actually join that system, be part of the of the radio system, be a radio presenter, right. and actually force it in. And that's what I did. And it's only after I felt like I I have established that Rwandan music is now on radio that I started now producing music. And I here I am. 
that's not a typical story, man. <laughs> Allow me to uh, deny what you said. Um, yeah, so fuck, man, that's uh, that's heavy. <laughs> Let me process this for a second. Um, so yeah, so okay, just take a step back. You said you were like a dancer for me. Like I was like, oh. What kind of dance? So apparently, like more like hip hop or like poppy type of stuff. Yeah, it was pop and hip hop, and and we back then like crump was like the new thing. Yeah. yeah. So we were crumpers more than Early anything. Two thousand. Yes, yeah. yes. So back then, was crump was like the new cool different thing. Yeah. So when you were a dancer and you just happened to be a crumper, <laughs> you were extra cool. You know. So we used to do kind of like that mostly, really. I guess that's. All happened after you guys saw the movie Rise. <laughs> yes, yes. Like mo mostly, like when we saw the movie Rise. But like back then, see, we were so like ingrained. We, we, we were so ingrained into the dance culture that we actually started like following uh, um, uh, Crump when he was actually like really just like an underground little really? movement. You know? Yeah. Like we, um, some of the kids in in our dance crew, for example, were from Belgium, and they like every time they went back on on vacation. They kind of ha had access to more like media and stuff like that that we have there so they'll bring all the new cool things that we don't know for example and they're like oh so there's this new thing that is called crumb for example so we actually got introduced to we we're aware of what crump is before rise That's before funny. we actually saw rise i definitely got introduced to uh to crumb with, with rise at the time was like what yeah. the hell is this yeah 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 yeah, like we 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 did not really know how to how to do it because there was not a lot of a lot of like YouTube was like a very big thing back then. Like yeah. it's not really something that we had that much access to, you know. Mm -hmm. So we we actually really started actually like tr trying it out when we saw Rise because mm -hmm. finally you had like a whole hour uh, actually visual of like the techniques yeah. and the stuff like that. That's when we actually started doing it. Uh, yeah, obviously that movie wasn't really like a breakdown of what that kind of dance works. Yes. It was uh, it was kind of challenging. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember, uh, I think the, the, the crumb just evolved a lot since that time. Yes. It kind of like died down too after mm -hmm. after a little while, no? No, no, no. no. It yeah. was still there, but it was just, um, it was it evolved a lot. It's still there. Yeah. It's I, just very like, a, it, it's a different branch. It's a, there's a lot of internal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was actually surprised like a couple, a, a couple weeks ago, I was just like browsing and I saw Tight Eyes. Yeah. The, the one of the guys in yeah, it, yeah. and he's still doing the crumb stuff. Yeah, yeah he's like you know? uh, the he's leading that movement. Yeah, uh, he's still doing. I was actually surprised because like I, I disconnected from 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 dance when I started doing, when I started actually like doing radio stuff and 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 singing, because it was kind of like hard to combine everything. Right. Um, yeah, I kind of like had to focus on some other stuff so from there on i kind of like disconnected a little bit like and i didn't really follow much really so it was really nice to see that these people that inspired me to, to dance are still dancing you know? yeah it's really it's really dope it's really cool and um so for the randy's music yes uh you were you were trying to push in the, into the radio you were trying to push that current uh, music or like old old school music or how what was your goal? Uh, my goal was to introduce an ur an urban type of Rwandan music because okay. really what we what we had was was mostly things that that, that were released before the genocide, so before ninety four. Right. You mm -hmm. know, I'm talking about like we are like we are in, in the late nineties uh, to early two thousands, and we're still listening to like mostly folk stuff. You know, mm -hmm. and these were stuff that that back then when we didn't really have like access to a lot of music from from elsewhere it was things that even the youth could follow because that's that's really what we all we knew you know mm -hmm. but as time went there was music from from the congo there was music from uganda and all that and these were done by like young people that we can kind of like identify right. with but we're not speaking our language you know so there was that thing lacking something that a music that that connects more with the younger generation the the, the urban kind of generation you know we still appreciate the music in Kinyarwanda, but like most of it were not really in styles that we are messing with like the r&b's and stuff like that i was one of the first uh uh singers just to sing r&b on, on radio right okay like like but r&b in Kinyarwanda, mm -hmm. which was not well received at first because to them, it was too, it was like an imitation. 
Right. You know, like they didn't get that a music style could be sang, could be sung in any language. Mm-hmm. Today, that is not even something that people wonder about. There is many R and B and pop kind of like sounding Rwandan artists, you know. But when I started, it was like completely unheard of and it was not well received at all. Like people just felt like we were wannabes, you know. Mm-hmm. They were like, "Oh, it's just, it's just, it's just like listening to Usher, but trying to sing, sing in Rwanda, which sounds like too much of a copy." So people didn't really care for that. I know? think people still they care about this. Like I hear that in my country all the time. You yeah. know, like that France is doing like the U.S. and stuff like that. Yeah. I hear that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so you said you started producing at. Uh, at what age? I started actually re-releasing music. I think I was 19. 19 so still there? 19 so, or 20. Yeah, I was like 19 or 20-ish. Okay. Yeah. And still in Rwanda? Yeah, still in Rwanda. What were you producing on? I was mostly doing like R&B sound- sounding stuff, um, like poppy sounding stuff. You know, my first, my first song that I that I officially released was called My Dance Floor and it was um, it it was ju- just because that was kind of like my transition from dance to becoming a, a, a full-time just singer mm-hmm. and it was like a good transition because it was just a, a song about dance you know mm-hmm. and my entire crew and, and every other crews that I knew were in the video it was it was it's a really bad video don't look it up on YouTube it's really bad, bad quality and everything. We filmed it with like a home camera kind of thing. <laughs> Back then it was amazing. That video was a top video on Rwandan TV, you know, but don't don't look it up. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, th- th- that was my transition from, from, from dance to start recording actually music. And yeah, so I just did mostly R&B stuff and sounding stuff you know mm-hmm. but what were you like what kind of equipment were you uh, using just out of oh, here fru- fruity do you, do you remember fruity loops oh it sounds familiar yeah i i, I don't i don't know if it's fruity loops or fruit loops something like that but it was like a very like um very like meaty kind of sounding right like sounds you know like everything sounded like really fake but, yeah. um like but but it was great it was it was it was the best we had really back then, you know. So it was still like it was it was computers. It was not like any instrument that you oh, guys no. were. Oh no! Okay, okay. Oh no! No no! We're just really pressing buttons, really. Right. <laughs> you know, like put on like those little. It it, it it was a production. It was a production thing that had like. Well, I, I guess most of them still have that, but it was just like li- those little boxes that you just had to align and select right. the sound and like mix. So it was like very basic, mm-hmm. like a just like a loop thing that you'll put on, and that's it. You know, it was the best. <laughs> and um okay so um from from the beginning of so that was a your first song was actually a song that you you you, you wrote you didn't do yeah. uh, covers or anything no i wrote it and my a good friend of mine produced it uh we had a small label that was called tfb the future uh the future production um and uh it yeah, so that, that's that, that's really who used to do the, the sounds, and then another friend of ours used to was kind of like messing with like videos and stuff like that. The cool thing is like today he is the top uh, video producer in East Africa now. He that's is that, he became cool. that good from like a home camera to like a full on uh, film equipment kind of thing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, thank you. And um, so so in terms of. Um... So what were you, what, where are you now in terms of uh, of your music, your your evolution in your music, and the, the message you're trying to to put in it? Now, um, well, where I am at with my music, I would say that I am just in, at a place where I'm more comfortable. Like I, um, you, 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 like at the beginning of, of like any career, I think like that you're really trying to get like a following and. Uh, so like most of the time, ta- most of the time, what you're trying to do is things that you feel like would attract people or like that, that, that people will digest better. You know, sometimes that also means kind of like muting yourself sometimes. Cause there are things that you want to ex- like, ex- like, uh, try on, but you know that it's really not what people are, 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 are getting into right now and mm-hmm. stuff like that, you know, um, now the difference 
with my music is that I'm really at a point where I can really just do whatever the hell I want, really, you know. Um, I, not that I feel like I, I have I have a big following, but it's not really like my focus anymore. I feel like I've done that work. Whoever follows me now is who is, is, is messing with me, you know, and I'm comfortable with that, whether it's three, whether it's five, whether it's a thousand. Mm -hmm. I'm really at a point where it's really I'm comfortable with my following and I can just express myself musically, really. Mm -hmm. um, like for example the song that i just released just a couple of days ago it's it's a, it's a norm song like that was something that i couldn't really do back then you know because being a, a rwandan musician like my audience kind of almost like required that i sing things that they relate to more and that are more local than feeling like you're trying something that is a little bit too foreign you know but today i can do that and it's not that i don't care that they follow or not but it's more that i feel like they kind of know who i am as, as an artist at this point and i i i i have some kind of like confidence that they're willing to follow the the new stuff that i want to try Right. They have seen me as express as expressive as I am, and and how much over the time I have, like I have, like open kind of like my horizons and, and expand and try to like try little things here and there and stuff like that. So I feel like anybody that has followed me so far won't take that as as a strange move. Right. It it makes sense today if you have followed me. So, but so that's the first combo music you, you produced. Yeah. So, was it like an interesting? Well, how was how was the this experience from like discovering a new? Uh... Let me tell you, this was actually <laughs> an alien experience. Yeah. Let me tell you, because first of all, no music has like they, they, they have like a like a <laughs> like an unusual kind of like structure. Mm -hmm. They have like a like three minutes intro right. you know and they like the whole song is like seven minutes or something like that so we have to even cut like a radio edit so it was interesting to write to, to try to write on one song but feeling like it's almost two songs that you're writing mm -hmm. because that's how long it is you know um it was a pretty challenging experience and i really really appreciated it because it was different from anything that i've ever done you know like when you get a beat for example you kind of like almost like can after you go through it, you kind of like can almost picture a song already because it's a it's a it's a structure that you are used to. You you understand exactly where the the, the verse falls in, and after just how many bars the the chorus starts, and you kind of like it feels natural and almost like unchallenged, so it can be boring. Um, this was a very interesting experience because it was just a new structure to me. So I kind of like had to understand where should I start? Like where does does the verse even start in here? I really had to to be comfortable with the fact that I'm going to have to wait a three minutes of a, of a, of a, of an intro and then try to figure out what do we do now with this th three minutes? Do we just leave it empty? Do we just like say random things and how many random things can you say for like two to three minutes? You know, like this, it was fun. Yeah, it was really, really a lot of fun. I really had a lot of fun recording this really. It was, it was great. And, and the thing is I've always been interested in, in long music. Um, mostly because of you guys, like all the DJs that I know really like, like that's really how I got introduced to long music. And uh, it became something that, it became a style of music that became so interesting to me. But I, as an artist, I like to like, I like to keep like things original and, and, and authentic, you know? Like I didn't want to produce, to produce it because I didn't know any long music producer. I know producers, I know musicians, and I could easily get somebody to like copy it, but that wouldn't sit well yeah. with me, you know? Like I could even get someone to actually copy it very well, but just because like, to me, it will feel like I got somebody to copy that style, mm -hmm. it just didn't sit well with me. Now, Ashiel, my cousin, <laughs> um, just happened to know there's uh, South African DJs that are also non producers, and that's how he got me connected to, to that. And yeah that that felt that was it that was it it felt like this is this is my opportunity to actually do this i'm doing it with like a like legit south african mom producers this is like something that is like personal to them you know i, I like that and it felt authentic and that's how i jumped into it so do you feel like you kind of brought some sort of um Randy's flavor on some uh, some south african music yes and that was my other challenge because Again, as a as a non music music fan, 
when I first got got, got the, the music, the, the beat that they sent they sent me, I had that like natural reflex of trying to almost sing like Mafikizolo or like the, the South African way of, of doing. And I hated that. Mm -hmm. I really hated that. Like, and, and that was the other thing that, that that was a different kind of experience because, um, like, when when I get a when when I decide on a beat that I'm gonna work on, it's really because it spoke to me and mm -hmm. it felt to me that I already um, already have an idea. It's just gonna be easy. I write a song within like a, a like an hour if I'm in the studio or two. Mm -hmm. This song took me like a whole month. Right. Not because I couldn't write anything, but because everything that I wrote, I, I didn't feel good about it. I feel like right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm copying too much, you know? And it's, it, it was too natural that I could not censor it. So it took me a, a long process for me to figure out how to bring me in it, mm -hmm. you know? And try to sing in a way that I didn't feel like I was copying anybody, but that, that, was, like, that was closer to a, a me version singing long, you know? And one of the inspiration that I got actually was David of working with uh, with Mafiki Zolo. You know, I liked how you could actually hear on the track how distinctively this was really his style. You know, and I I kind of like did a work to like get into that state state of mind, like stay me while trying to do something that is not really me. Okay, so let me ask you a, a, a little bit more of an abstract question. Yes. <laughs> What do you think motivates you to to stay yourself and your creative path, and what not like motivates me? <laughs> and what you know prevent you from you know like feeling like you're copying? What is so disgusting about this for you? I don't know if it's disgusting, but from what I hear, yeah, you know, like that's the path you don't want to take. Because um, I th I think it's something. I don't I don't know if it's a specific thing, but I really think it's something that was instilled in, in, in me when I was very young. You know? I I grew up in Rwanda, which is um also like post genocidal Rwanda was even a little bit more conservative. Like there was a lot of don'ts and um you, you really had had to like censor yourself a lot, you know? Um but that's not me. Like I've always been someone that wanted to say more you know like wanted to explore more like wanted to look a little bit different if i if i want to like i i don't really need to conform kind of thing so <laughs> growing in a place that wanted me to conform and me having such a will to not conform was an interesting thing because i had to claim it because everything else was telling me not to you know i had to claim it and because i claimed it it's something that I just hold on to dear. It 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 it's just something that I I can't drop easily. Nothing can really make me drop it easily. It's like one of those things that you really feel like you earned and you really you, you really went the extra mile for it. That there's nothing that will make you drop it. So mm -hmm. it becomes just something that you. I want to say naturally, but it's it not, it's not always that easy. It's not always that natural. You hold, kind of almost sometimes have to insert it into things you know but yeah it became something that I feel like I own and, and it's a prize that I am really proud to always let it shine through things whether it's 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 how I dress whether it's in my music like it's really something that I always remember to like bring with me mm -hmm. yeah do you see that maybe like a, a parallel between difference of like feeling home somewhere and not feeling home somewhere um, it's like a, some sort of like research for identity yes I, th I think I, th I th yeah I think <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever really really thought of it that, that much you know but I think it, 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 it could be a little bit of that yeah sorry uh I hope I'm not asking to. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> I am, I am a very philosoph philosophical guy, man. Like anybody that, anybody that, I, I, I think most artists that I know, like, really like actually pondering on those kind of like questions more than anything, really. Yeah. So, when was uh, when did the, the the switch, the country switch, happen? The country switch. Oof. Um. So now. Again, doing music in Rwanda was a dope, 
experience for me because it, it's it's a it's a small country. I feel like it was maybe e easier for me to expand that way. Not that I think I, I'm not good enough to expand in a, in a larger place, <laughs> uh, but but it's just a fact. It, it was just really easy for me to like expand. But there is one of those feelings where you feel like you're you. There's just so much you can expand where you are. You right. Know? Like you feel like it's there's just so much that you can do before you you, you start looking like you, you start being misunderstood because there's just so much people can understand where you are, you know. Um, and that's really how I started feeling limited in my music, you know. I and again, really, I, I was I was the generation that that forced things into people. Like I was the generation that that that. Um, broke the norms so we we met a lot of uh, a lot of b barriers and a lot of no and a lot of like weird looks and stuff like that that today the kids that are doing the same thing are not even getting you know mm -hmm. because it's now a norm right you know? but we made that norm you know so I come from from re from a generation of musician that have met many walls yeah at the beginning you know <laughs> um, and um, and 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 that kind of like shaped a lot of a, a lot of everything that I do really you know basically mm -hmm. yeah yeah so do you you get this um, this maybe do you, do you get the taste of it uh, like opening roads eventually uh, when, when you've been doing this uh, all your career and then you know you always go for like the the unexplored territory yeah do you get the taste of it. At some point, you constantly need to do that. To 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 feel like you're opening doors. Like if you're if you're if you feel like you're on like a I don't want to say day number two, but if you feel like you just um, going back on a path that is already made, and you just feel like you do get bored. Yeah, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't, because sometimes there are things that just make sense. To, like you 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 don't want to reinvent the wheel, really. If it's yeah. all, you know. Uh, but sometimes I do. There, there, are, there are things if I feel like, if I feel like it's already been of, overdone, I don't do it. For example, like for example, there was a there was a time where, with the with the booming of Nigerian music, there was a time where every Rwandan artist were producing songs that sounds like Nigerian, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. But like many people would ask, but but, but the thing is, they were popular doing that. You know, because it was interesting that people who feel all this Nigerian vibe in Kenya, Rwanda, you know, it was interesting and they were really popular doing that, which will also make other people feel like the only way for me to, to now be on radio is, is if I do that. But I was one of the only ones that were actually not doing that at all, you know, not doing anything that sounds too Afro, Afrobeat kind of thing, you know, and it was anytime I was asked really it was mostly because I felt like there was, there was already too many hands in that cookie jar you know mm -hmm. I don't want to just be an extra hand really like I, I wouldn't mind if I was one of the first to like try that route but if I already come when there's already too many hands in there I'm like ah so next. <laughs> it's a little ego that builds up with the, the fact of opening a path maybe you know um, it's not necessarily an ego from 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 the fact that not in a I negative have, way huh? yeah oh, yeah, no, no, it's not always negative oh uh, oh i i like just like everybody i yeah. have my egos definitely yeah. um no it it, 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 it it is an ego but not because it doesn't come from from starting things from from me having that experience of starting things um but i think it's just a natural ego of just feeling like uh there's there's just way to like it, it looks like a crowd already like i I don't care to jump in a crowd, really. <laughs> like it, it's it's already being overdone. Like it, it just, you know. So this I call it the Rambo syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the movie Rambo. No. That guy who was like <laughs> over super, like he's like the the perfect killing machine, and then when he come back to the civil life, yeah, you just feel like he's lost. Yeah. Do you feel like there's something similar where you built this skill of being able to opening roads and like explore an yeah. explored path? And then when you come back to um, like a basic road that everybody does, like you yeah. feel like your talent or your skill is wasted. There was a time of my life that I felt that way, yeah. you know. But see, after after I left after I left Rwanda, um, 
um, after I left Rwanda, actually that was a question that, that you asked me before yeah, I even forgot it? my train of yeah. thought. <laughs> after I left Rwanda, okay. <laughs> I like that I just caught it like 12 minutes later. <laughs> so after I left Rwanda, I had to now be exposed to a whole different mentality mm -hmm. because I left Rwanda really when I was like one of the best like to, to ever do it in the, in, in the industry there, you know? So I had that ego mm -hmm. that I'm like, I like when you when you come from a place where you're the shit, it's it becomes like part of you. You know you're the shit mm -hmm. because every day you walk in the street, every day you, you, you like anywhere you are, everybody reminds you that you're the shit. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's almost like not your fault that you think you're the shit. <laughs> you know, like it's ev it's everyone's fault. <laughs> you know, so um, but now going to it, like when I left Rwanda, I went to live in LA, which is like, dude, it's like. <laughs> It's like two opposite worlds, yeah, yeah. you know? And I'm also in a place that, like, mind you, I just came from a place where there is barely a music industry, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, but this is now a place where there is a music industry. It's like, it's 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 really ruthless because they are at a point where it's, it, it, it's just so saturated. There's, there's just so much talent that it's not necessarily even really the talent that, that they're looking for. They're looking right. for a little je ne sais quoi, you know? Um, so I had to be now introduced to that those kind of harsh realities. Like, coming mm -hmm. from a place where literally, I could I could get every door open for me being in a place where you ha I had to work a little extra harder than I've ever worked mm -hmm. for example that now introduced me to a whole different type of thinking you know like thinking to like be ready for change you know be ready to like make changes in how I do things you know um, just because from my observation that's really where it makes sense that I should go to to keep doing what I'm doing kind of thing you know so I went from thinking I'm the shit what I'm doing is 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 really what I'm supposed to be doing mm -hmm. to really understanding that uh, you have to be open to like readjusting sometimes you have to be open to like doing things a, a certain way sometimes you have to be really open to like hearing some really harsh criticism yeah. you know which was also something that i wasn't necessarily used to because again you come from a place where everybody think you're doing great environment yeah you know so i i i i'm very it was harsh it was really harsh like <laughs> it's really freaking harsh uh, but i am so glad i had that, that, that experience because Humbling experience yeah it gave me that balance you yeah. know i don't necessarily think that i'm the shit <laughs> you know not anymore and i it, it I don't think I don't even think of that as something negative. I don't think that I'm not the shit, but I just don't walk thinking that I'm the shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Art is humbling sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's a great school though. Yeah. It's a great school to um to 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 you know always uh, mess with your ego and put you back in your you know in your place. Yes. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Keeps you flexible. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Flexibility is important to be able to learn, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so LA then Toronto or there's a other stops in the middle? Yeah, it was LA then Toronto. Um, LA it was actually supposed to be LA then Montreal. And then I flew to Canada and the first the first city that I stopped at w w was in Toronto. Um, there, there was some friends of mine, some some friends of mine from Haiti that that I met in New York, and I just happened to to hear that they live in Toronto now. So when I stopped in Toronto, I went to visit them for a little while, and there was something that made me fall in love with Toronto. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just something I I can't really even place it, but one of it was the fact that um, I didn't find such a big Rwandese community here, you know? Oh, and, really? Yeah, and to me coming from a place where, yeah, you always felt like you're on display, you know? Mm -hmm. Because, like, ev every time I, like, it, it, it just felt like too much pressure, for example, like, every time you step out, you have to, you have to look your best because people are going to be staring at you, kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it almost felt like a little relief to be in a place where I don't feel like anybody's even gonna notice me in the street. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it felt like a like a dope feeling, you know? 
And it's not just that that made me fall in love in Toronto, but that was like one of the parts of it, you know? That was like a little part that I feel like, this is so good. I want to ride this for a little, for a little while, <laughs> you know? I like, well, just want, want to stay here for a little while. I knew very well that there's a huge community of Rwandans, for example, in Montreal. Not that I hate them, not that I hate you guys. I love you guys. <laughs> but um, it, it just felt to me that I'm just gonna get to have that, you know, that just chance to be like whatever the hell that I want to be rather than being whatever the hell that I'm already in in some people's eyes you know mm -hmm. like people people sometimes hold you to that you know when they already know you for being something like for example a comedian I've, I've heard many comedians being annoyed by the fact that when they're in the street for example just like trying to be trying to have a Sunday walking in the park right like a fan will, will, will stop and they'll be like do that joke do that joke you know yeah. like people want want you to be what they know you as you know mm -hmm. and sometimes it can be annoying to just be expected yeah. to just be that you know but that's that uh, consumer mentality right yes. especially in that kind of society yes you know so like that feeling was good mm -hmm. I feel like I like that I want to write this for as long as I can you know what kind of um, sorry I'm very um <laughs> not savvy about one though like what type of uh, system is, is there a system is it like a uh, political system like is it uh it's not um ah sorry consumers and capital is like uh, like canada right capital um I, i don't think it's a capitalist system no. um I, I I don't really know oh, much a, about I don't really follow right. much politics or shit like that. So No, yeah. just like the kind of system it's a democracy. It is a democracy. Like the president, yeah. It is definitely a democracy, yeah. It is definitely a democracy. Oh sorry, the what I was looking for is like is it a republic? It, it is a republic, okay, yes. There is there is a there is a president, an elected president, a dope elected president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You said too much or not enough. What do you mean by dope? Like, <laughs> oh, he's he's dope just by the fact that I mean, like, there's not many, like, in my opinion, there's not many in Africa or anywhere. There's not many president that are today sitting in office that also have the taste of what it is to actually liberate a country. Right. You know, like actually, like, get your hands dirty, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so j just for that, that just gives him like such a notch of coolness. You know, like you're not just sitting leading a, you actually sitting leading a country that you helped free right you know a that leader that that is so validated like right I, yeah you know and just overall like he's his way of thinking how he puts us first is something that that all of us just feel so good like especially when, when you come from a country that you had to be a refugee so, so, so many times where you where you almost had to feel like you don't belong so many times like, being in a country that you feel like puts you first being from a country that you feel like puts you first it it gives you so much power and and self-confidence yeah mm -hmm. so he he's at the head of doing that and that's how that's why i think he's dope <laughs> and uh so how do you feel in comparison canada comparison to to this feeling in rwanda um Canada is an interesting country. Like I feel like Canada has a very familiar sense of of national pride that I know back home. You mm -hmm. know, um, like most Canadians that that, that that I met really have a sense of pride of being Canadian. You know, there is we're 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 known as being nice. We're known as being um, uh, just generally peaceful people and that is something to be to be proud of you know so that little sense of pride is something that is similar between the two countries that mm -hmm. I come from you know and um, and but it's also different in in, in in its in its in its history you know like it's it has a, a, a really particular history of, of, of settlers of 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 its own genocides of like it just has like a really different history that makes it also kind of different in, in in a way you know so th there are things that i find familiar in the canadian culture in the canadian mm -hmm. way but there are things that i also had to learn as as new things you know like how you could still be proud of a country that has such a dark past you know right. like it's it's interesting it's just an interesting way to 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 operate really yeah all right so let's take let's take a step back yeah. <laughs> enough politics yeah maybe maybe not uh <laughs> you when you when you write 
when you write your songs, yeah. when you write, you know, produce your music. Yeah. Um, what drives you? What, what, what's your goal? It's a feeling. Like, most of the time I write about a feeling, really. And it's mm -hmm. something that sparks out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I have written songs just because I just smoke. I, I, I just woke up at 4 a.m. and smoked a joint and felt like, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is the thing. Um, I have written songs just because I was bored and, and that boring moment inspires me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really like a spark and it has to be a spark to me for me to like really jump onto it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's something that just happened at, at a very random time, really. Yeah, and sometimes the spark happens because of a beat, for example. Like when I hear a, a specific music, I'm like, holy shit. It's almost like the music itself is like whispering the words in my ear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's for your songwriting and for your... So do you like think of the people who, who are gonna listen to it when no. you... Not really? Sorry. No. No, no I don't think uh, other people are gonna listen really. Yeah? Like I... 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 I, I find that that... that, that that really I used to you know I used to but that no not really anymore I find that that really takes a lot of honesty out of your your writing you know right. if you if you have to like tell tell or make it for so it's more about getting something out than yeah. sharing something it's it's getting and getting it out and sharing it but really. what are you sharing if you're not sharing a message um, see, I don't share a specific message. I, I I can't really tell you that I sing about love and like like only about love, you know. Um, I can't really tell you that I sing about like politics and only about but like I really sing about like whatever spark in the moment, you know. Mm -hmm. I have songs about love. Um, I have songs that are just typically typically like party songs, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and all those songs were not inspired by 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 something like so square uh, as this is what I wanted to do this is what I intended to do mm -hmm. it was more like this is what this moment sparked really you know like I, I could I could sit down and start writing a love song when I wasn't even thinking about anything that is related to love or like romantic so you more like <laughs> write like you paint Kind of, exactly. That is actually a good, a, a good analogy. Yeah, I, I pretty much write as I, as 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 a painter. You know, mm -hmm. like you get an empty canvas and start expressing yourself and see what you come up with. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, does it apply to producing as well? Like as in producing the music itself. Yeah. I don't produce music. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I don't I, produce music. All right, all right. I I don't actually like really like do the music writing. I can, I can, I can have like a like like I can. I can participate in the creation of the music when it's something that I wrote. So there has been songs that I that I've written and I've and I've had an idea of what I think the music should be. Mm -hmm. So I would have some kind of like participation in that but really i i let it, i leave it to the people who actually have, have the skills to do that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so yeah so sorry i'm gonna get te more technical yes. like I, mean, I don't know if people are gonna understand that but do you even when you write your songs like because even if you don't produce the music you still need to like think of melodies that you can create on the top of the the actual yeah. music yeah i can think that there's still like a little bit of brain produ production still oh yeah yeah and do you when you uh, you write your songs um so you said it always tri it's always triggered by the music but you by the you, moment uh, by sometimes the moment. by the yeah. music yeah oh, okay 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 so you did you do sometimes come up with melody that that are coming completely out outside of the music yeah and um yeah, yeah, I play ukulele, so oh, okay. that that's my composition buddy, really. So that just allows me to 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 have an idea of a melody that I'm that, that I'm that I'm playing, and also it kind of allows me to, because I I 
I didn't learn music in school, so I don't speak notes and, and, and technical stuff like that. So I literally have to like go, if I'm not, if I don't have an instrument, I literally have to go to a, to a, to a producer and go, dun, 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 and then here you go, brr, dun, 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 and which is really confusing, you know, it's like <laughs> completely confusing. So yeah, so that, that, that really what's helped me to, uh, helps me to sometimes convey it to a producer. Mm -hmm. This is, this is what I, I, this is the direction I want to take. And then of course, when I, when I work with other, with other artists, I want, I want their, their expertise to also shine through. So I don't like to take too much control over that. You know, I will, I will, I will take care of, 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 of the, of the, of the singing and stuff like that. I'll give you an idea of what I mean, but I really like to give them that creative freedom to mm -hmm. also bring, bring, bring out a little bit, of, a little bit of themselves. I don't, I, I don't just want them to be a vehicle that I use to like, do something I feel right. like I use them then work right. with them <laughs> you know yeah and uh, do you um, do you write for other people I have written only one song for another person but it was really because it was a song that we we're supposed to write to, to, to sing together then I then I left and we never finished it so he right. just ended up just singing it all by himself so that is the only song that I've ever written for somebody mm -hmm. yes it's uh, so and um, uh, got my random questions, but yes. <laughs> you, uh, if you were not a singer right now, yeah, what you do? If I was not a singer right now, I'll be a chef. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I, t I, t I take I take almost the same passion um, in cooking as I take in, into creating music, you know, because it's to me it's almost like similar in the ways that you're playing with flavors mm -hmm. to come up with like one like all of them mashed into one flavor mm -hmm. like you're not literally you, like when you're eating like a meal you're not necessarily tasting just the tomatoes or like just this spice or just that spice uh -huh. it's really like the the mixed version of a, and the mix and the mastered version of the food you right. know? <laughs> yeah so that, so i think that is the other thing that i would do or i would be a daycare teacher because i love children <laughs> I just love children until they are too opinionated <laughs> but I love love babies <laughs> I think you could also be like a voiceover for some music with your deep voice <laughs> sure yeah do some Millie Vanilli <laughs> kind, of, kind of thing <laughs> and so and what did you study um, or you just like left school at some point to focus on the, on music I study so in school I studied literature Okay. and psychology so I, I, I went I, like when when I, when I went to university when I uh, finished uh, um, so in, in, in Africa they call it secondary school mm -hmm. I went first to journalism school just because I was in radio already and doing um, like and just doing like radio DJing stuff but there was a new program at the radio that kind of like wanted to like focus more into like real technical journalism mm -hmm. because it was a radio show that was teaching uh, the youth in in East Africa more about politic life and and stuff like that just to, to be a little bit more aware of what it is for example to to to, to choose um, a, a political uh, candidate for example uh, versus another you know mm -hmm. uh, so it was just like really basic but we had to actually go to journalism school to be certified and actually learn the techniques how to do uh, uh, document uh, uh, reportage. How do you call it reportage again? Reporter, like so, how, yeah. how, how to do reporting and stuff like that. So I I went to journalism school for two years. I think it was like a crash course by by the the, the U.S. embassy. So they made like a they were sponsoring the program, so they made like a specific program for for us pretty much like uh, the group of journalists of young journalists that they were going to train oh, interesting yeah so i went to this it was like we were studying at an online university but like from the from from Rwanda, from the rwandan embassy kind of thing um so i did that and then i also studied psychology and with all that that's what uh make you choose to not be political <laughs> yes um <laughs> Mostly because, like, growing up, my dad always told me, like, 
please, all my children, never do politics. Politics is just dirty. Um, and I never really understood why. So when I got a little bit more trained to understand politics as a young as a young person, it really confirmed that it's really dirty. You know, like it's really something that I just really don't want to take part part in. You know, and it's something that I was passionate about at, at, at a certain time of my life, but it was just because my my work required me to be passionate about it and understand it and follow it. You know, but after I didn't have to do that, I completely dropped it. I I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't care to know. Like once in a while, I will laugh about a joke, a new joke that is not a joke to him that Trump said. Um, but like, apart from that, I don't care for politics really. <laughs> I mute it. So you don't want to tell a joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to tell funny jokes, good jokes, not, right. po not politics. <laughs> I see. But, um, should I forget what I say? Um, Politics, politics. Yeah, I, I'm curious to know what uh, a U.S. embassy that teach young children in Rwanda uh, journalism would uh, would teach you. Um, it, <laughs> it 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 was really just really focused on. Um, it was really focused mostly on African uh, politics and and just the idea that. So when when they started this program, like they really wanted to to bring a certain awareness that the youth in in, in this region didn't necessarily have, you know. Um, when you observe and in, in, in Rwanda, for example, and most African countries where you have seen like conflicts or or like uh, straight up wars and, and and a genocide like us, for example, like you observe that the the most people that take part in this are the youth. You know, like young people. And you wonder how much do they know of what they're doing and how the, the repercussion is going to be. Because in the end, you really have all these young people in jail. Right. You know, because they have been, pill they have been pillaging, they have been like committing all these crimes, killing people and stuff like that. You have like, like when, when, the, when the genocide ended, there was like, like thousands and thousands of, 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 of young people under 25 that were in jail for like really like gen genocide crimes which is like a an interesting thing to understand if this person even really understood what he, what he was taking part in mm -hmm. you know like a young person like you should be a little bit more aware to like want to take those kind of like 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 uh, actions but more interestingly so that these were propagandas, like they were, they were really motivated by propagandas from 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 like politicians who know politics, who knows exactly what they're doing. They're really manipulating like these young people because they they are strong. They are they have the energy. Like if you really need like action taken, these are the people that can actually take it. So you have to you have to be able to like manipulate them and make them feel like there is something in it for them kind of thing you know and it was it was the idea that if these young people understood more how politicians work they'll they, they will be more um, thoughtful about deciding these things you know deciding why am I listening to this politician for example you know like understanding that he they have an end goal in this but does that end goal like benefit me kind of thing you know so <clears throat> that was really the idea try, to try to to, to to teach um the youth to bring more of, a, of an awareness in, in east africa um to the political life you know like make people understand a little bit better how politicians move you know and how if you want to participate, what are the safer ways? Like, what are the things that you should you should um, look out for? You know, like, what are the things that that should motivate your 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 participation, kind of thing? You know, and how, what what is the safe way of participating without ending up in jail and the politician somewhere in exile in Belgium, like eating filet mignon? You know, so yeah, yeah, that 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 was kind of like the idea. And so everything that they taught us really mostly focused on the things that affects the region and and historically how, for example, 
again, I, I talk about Rwanda just because that is really what, what I'm familiar with uh, the most. Like, for example, in Rwanda, um, radio did a, a huge part in 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 in, uh, in 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 spreading propaganda about genocide mm -hmm. ideology, you know. And again, because they understood that all the youth are listening to radio. Like, um, of course, just like any countries, there is like a popular radio uh, presenter, you know. And if you if you are if you get that guy on, on your side and get him to like literally sp spread lies about uh, ab about the the Tutsi rebels and stuff like that, and and how they're going to come and invade the country, so you have to like literally finish their race, kind of like this were this were th this were things that were tailor made for a young people's mind who is not so aware mm -hmm. you know to understand and take action you know and so that's just what they were hoping to achieve to like get these people get this young population in that region to like be more aware of how these things get played mm -hmm. and how they can affect you you know yeah sorry for like talking for hours no about it. it's my fault that says yeah. uh, i'll go away from the politics but yeah. <laughs> So, okay, uh, and um, I think we, we, we kind of like not went too much into uh, in, too in depth in, about the, the transition to Canada and yeah. more like what were your struggle uh, just to, to finish the few minutes of what was challenging here or what are, were the cultural shocks that you experienced? N not necessarily in Canada. My most, I mean, culture shock wise, uh, culture shock wise was mostly in LA, mostly because it was the first place that I that I've been after after what I've known my whole life, you know. Um, but it was also kind of like a, like a little bit extreme than here, really. Um, here, not so much because, again, Toronto being such a melting pot of cultures, you don't. You don't feel like there is so much of a do, of, of a dominating culture that you f you feel contrast with. There is so many cultures around you. At least at least when I moved here, around me there were so many cultures that I re didn't really feel. I felt that I felt like like my background was just one more other culture that people around me can can learn about me while I'm learning about theirs kind of thing. You know that 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 kind of like helped not having too much of a culture shock but the challenges that i had here was really mostly coming from a place where you feel more or less established and having to start from scratch and literally having to like start anything like any any contacts that i have today are contacts that i didn't have when i got here that i had to work my way up to get you know like mm -hmm. that i had to like so i had to redo I essentially had to redo work that I had done once in my life, you know, like right. like reestablish yourself as a musician, you know, but not just as a musician, as as a person like dwelling in this in this city, really, you know, like what are the things that brings me peace? Like what are the what are the places that I like to go and feel like ah oh, this is great, or just just reestablishing yourself in a new city? It, it was challenging. It came with the challenge. Yeah, I see. So. We're getting uh, closer to the end of the the show, but um, where, where where can we find that new track right now? My new track is yeah. everywhere. It's yeah. called Dangerous. It's literally everywhere on YouTube, on on Spotify, on any online platform. Really, you'll get it. There's... Go stream it. <laughs> and um, let's uh, let's end this episode right now. But we're gonna do a little extra video for the Patreons. Nice. And maybe. Uh, can play that music for us nice absolutely you want to you do that yeah sure right. like you so, mean like on, on my yeah. phone kind of thing so we're gonna jump to the patreon bonus stories okay so that was casa thank you for coming thank you <laughs> and uh let's do that patreon bonus story <laughs>